Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our modern C++ series. And today we're going to be looking at this standard template library, looking at the algorithm library and some useful functions for min, max, and clamping ranges of values. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our favorite website, CPP reference here. We're going to go to the algorithms library and we're going to go ahead and dive all the way well towards the bottom here of our page. We've already looked at many of these operations. So again, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you check out the playlist if you want to learn about any of these other operations as we continue our journey into the, well, algorithm portion of the standard library. So towards the bottom here is the minimum and maximum operations here. So as you can imagine here, most of these sort of stand for what they are. If I've got two values here, it's going to return the greater of given values. So let's go ahead and look at one of these and we'll just go ahead and play around with it. And basically this is a templated type here. And again, we could write our own custom comparator if we want. So we'll go ahead and do that as an example in case you have some custom type and you want to tell if something's greater than or less than some other value, right? Maybe you've got two characters that are battling and you want the greater of them to win, but that's based on a bunch of statistics like their hit points, agility, magic power, whatever it might be. So we'll go ahead and do a little example with that with max, but let's go ahead and just start with some basic values here and we'll try out some things like max, min, and clamping arrange, for instance. Uh, so as far as it works, just as you'd imagine, takes the uh, returns the greater of two values. And since C++ uh, 14, there's a consp expert version that will take it and initialize our list and actually just return the maximum value if I provide multiple values to this function. So again, kind of a multi-purpose uh, function here with a few different uh, things that work here. So uh, again, there's one comparison if you're just comparing two items as you might write this function yourself. And of course, if you've got a list of things, then you might prefer to use this. So that's sort of why to probably prefer this versus just writing your own max function. Uh, a lot of folks will just write their own macro version. I'd encourage you to just instead use this because there are, um, I imagine going to be in most compilers and at least since C++14, although this isn't marked as such, so I'm a little bit um, uh, skeptical of this, maybe this just needed an update, but there should be a const expert version so you don't really get any advantage of just writing your own macro. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Uh, it used to be common for folks to sort of do their own define max, you know, uh, a, b, something like this, and then, you know, return, um, uh, you know, the, the sort of ternary operator here, A greater than B, then give me A, or otherwise, oops, you do something like this here, uh, B here. So you could write a little function like that. Um, and let's go ahead and try it out here uh, just to see what happens here. Let's do C out, and we'll just take a, the max of 7 and 2. Let's see if I wrote this correctly on my first uh, go here. Uh, and let's go ahead and just compile that here. Uh, oops, I guess it doesn't uh, know the... I guess if we're terminating this with a uh, semicolon, which let's see if this just works here. Yeah, it's not going to... Here, let's just assign it to a value here. Int max equals the max of 7 and 2. And let's just go ahead and provide that. Let's see if that does what we want. And if I run it, it gives us the value 7. So again, this is just doing a textual replacement here, right, for the assignment. It's not as great. Just use, get get the type safety out of this, basically, is what I'm saying here. Because you might want to make sure that you're comparing two types. There could be conversions or stuff, weird stuff that's going on. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. Uh, I don't recommend uh, the macro version. Use the STL. Uh, version instead. Okay, so just if you're wondering what the purpose of this stuff is, um, or or even just write your own function, that's probably fine here. So uh, let's get rid of that here uh, by just commenting that out. Uh, I'll leave it in here just so you have it for reference. Uh, not recommended um, in general, I would say. Okay, I'd prefer the STL version or your own function for your own use case. So Anyways, let's go ahead and look at uh, how this is implemented. Uh, and again, I know and some of you might know various tricks that you can do with making this a little bit more type safe. Again, I'm just going to rely on the C++'s uh, compiler <laughs> rather than the macro and, and weird little uh, tricks for checking the types and so on. Uh, so there's some neat stuff that you can do here. But um, anyway, let's let's get to a little example here. 
uh, let's see what they've got here. Uh, and here they're actually comparing uh, oh sizes of strings, I guess here. So they've got a range of them. Yeah, let's just let's just play around with some numbers here. Uh, let's go ahead and do the max of seven and two. And let's see if this this should be evaluating to uh, returning the type here. Uh, so that looks okay to me. Yeah, go ahead and give that a run here. And we get seven. And then let's go ahead and pass in uh, a bunch of things here. Nine, six, five. And we get the nine out of here. Okay, so not too bad here. Uh, makes sense. And as you can imagine, there is a corresponding min here. So let's just go ahead and switch that over here. Uh, and you'll see now we're getting the minimum values correctly, two in both of these cases. All right, and that is just this value here, returning the smaller of two given values here. Okay, um, so let's actually keep playing around with this and let's write our own custom type here, as I alluded to. Uh, maybe we'll get into uh, clamp and these other value um, functions in another video in min element and so on. Um, so make sure you subscribe and check those out. Let's let's just go ahead and do the custom comparator here. And let's just say we've got a monster of some sort and it's got, you know, some capabilities here. It's got some power. It's got some agility uh, and magic. OK, so three attributes here. Um, you know, we can let's just give this a constructor just to be a little bit interesting. Uh, so we'll construct two monsters. Uh, let's give them a name to uh, string a name. So we need to include our string uh, library here. And basically what I want to do is implement the custom um, comparator here, just so I know how to compare these values here uh, with the max and min. So that means we need this function here. Uh, I need to write this uh, particular function here. If we'll copy the signature. Uh, but again, I can implement this as uh, part of a member function, uh, but let's just go ahead and uh, add it down here. And I'll just call it, uh, you know, monster compare. Um, or actually, you know, the, the use case might want to use this. Let's actually do this for a, a few different cases. Let's call monster uh, if they're battling or monsters if they are, um, I don't know, battling with like melee hand to hand combat versus if they're battling uh, with magic. OK. Um, so again, this this might be a reason that you might, I mean, this is just a strategy you could use for these uh, uh, different monsters here. Uh, but let's go ahead and do a substitution here. Whoops. Uh, oops, that gonna, what did it do here? Yeah, let's just do a substitution type for a monster. I'm uh, just getting a little bit creative here. Uh, and basically what I want to do here is... Um, uh, we could go ahead and print. Uh, well, let's just actually use the power, agility, and magic here. Um, and we'll come up with some sort of formula here uh, for monster A. Uh, so monster A equals power times agility times magic. We'll just multiply everything. Uh, same thing for monster B. Power times agility times magic. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, let's let's discard this. Let's just get rid of magic since this is the melee combat uh, for this uh, version here. And we'll just compare them. Uh, so we'll say, uh, let's just return uh, monster A less than monster uh, B. Okay. And that'll be it. And then let's go ahead and keep this here as well except they're going to replace uh, magic times agility here. Okay. And maybe for magic, um, the agility is not as important. So I multiply this by something, but again, this is just some made up system here. <laughs> so anyways, um, okay. Uh, and let's get this just so we can fit uh, things a little bit nicely in our screen here. So anyways, we've got a monster here uh with power agility magic we could add in some name if we want here and we want to use this max function to figure out which one wins which one's stronger right if they're combating okay so let's go ahead and create two monsters here and for this i'm going to actually give a constructor 
Uh, let's open up a line here. That takes in the uh, the power, agility, and the uh, magic here in a initializer list here. So the power will be the power, agility for the AGI here, not artificial general intelligence, but power, and the magic, uh, mag, something like that here. Okay. All right. Uh, and then we'll have that as the constructor. Okay, let's see if I've broken anything. Uh, oh, looks like I, I have here. Uh, oops, I got to add in the monster power that we have here. And again, if you're building a game, maybe you would, um, you know, add a little bit of randomness into this and so on. But again, for demonstration purposes, I think this will do the trick here. Okay, how's that doing here? Uh, that's a little bit better. If I fix up the types here. Oops, there we go. These are both going to be monsters. They could be different types of monsters or whatever. Uh, there we go. All right, so we've got our monster melee. Uh, let's create two of the monsters. Uh, monster. Uh, I'm going to call this guy the Crusher, who's really strong. So he's going to take in a lot of power and agility, but very little magic. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. 100 power, 100 agility, 1 magic. And we're going to have the mage. Who's going to have a lot of magic and uh, not really much agility, but a little bit here. Okay. Um, okay, and now let's go ahead and compare them. Uh, let's go ahead and take the max of the crusher and the mage. And then we'll go ahead and do the uh, same thing again, but we're going to pass in the different comparators. So these are what's going to battle with melee uh, here. And this one's going to battle with uh, magic here. Okay, just to make this a little bit more fun here. Uh, okay, so what do we want here? We want the crusher to return here as the object that's going to win. And then we want the mage to be the thing that returns. Uh, now, what's this going to return if I have this operator stream here? Uh, this should give us a long list of errors here because we don't know how to print this out, right? We need, um, you know, if we're returning something, the max element here, what does that actually mean, the type here? Okay, so a little bit of a review here. Uh, we've got to implement uh, operator here. Uh, and let's see, let's see if it gives us some hints here. Uh, it is going to give us some hints here. Um, so let's go ahead and write this function here. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. I think I can just write it. Uh, let's see, here's the type monster and O stream. Uh, still a little bit yucky. Let's see if I can get a better type here. Uh, let's see here from the error messages. Otherwise, I'm going to have to look in CPP reference here, which is no problem either. Uh, again, just to show you that I don't always remember these things. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ostream tends to be one of the more egregious uh, template errors here, uh, but I believe we need to take in an Ostream object and then the type. Uh, let's give it a guess here. Let's see if that works. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, so I've got Iostream. Let's see. Standard stream reference to that <coughs> and let's see here the return type uh actually i don't remember so how do i remember uh, again cpp reference search o stream um this looks like the operator that we want go ahead and scroll down uh and this looks like a reasonable signature for us to use here okay i'm just going to grab that and paste it in and let's go ahead and do that Oops, paste. There we go. All right, so now we should be able to return and handle our monster objects. And as soon as I do this here, um, and it's just going to return to our O stream the, uh, let's just call it M, the M.name, and then wins. Okay, uh, for this example. Uh, and that should do the trick here. 
Oh, it just returned wins because we don't uh, have a monster name here. So let's adjust that. That's a string uh, name. And then we'll make sure that we do name, name. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure that's clear for you. Let's be N. Okay, so in our initializer list. Okay, uh, so that should do the trick here. Let's just give our guys some names. This is going to be the Crusher and the Mage. Okay. All right. So the Crusher wins and then the Mage wins in our battle because we're taking the max uh, of each of them based off of what um, Comparator that we're doing, whether one is better at battling magic or melee. Okay. Um, so kind of a fun example here. <laughs> Hopefully that's just a, a less trivial example for min and max, um, as you see here. Could do things with initializer lists, and of course we could pass in comparators. Um, so kind of fun to think about using these with your custom data types if you've provided the overloads um, and so on. So uh, anyways, just a brief code review. We created our own custom object, made sure to overload. Again, sometimes I like to review some of the things that we've seen in the past in this series here as we go along. Um, so do a little um, uh, putting in the o, o stream here, uh, overload. And then we wrote our custom comparators, which are, you know, completely made up at this point, but maybe we just determine it's power times agility versus magic and ability, depending on if it's magic or melee. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down here and create two custom objects and be able to print out the winner. Now this would still win, um, you know, return the uh, value for uh, the object for us here. Uh, and we know how to handle this. So actually, let's do one more thing just so we have complete uh, coverage of this. Well, let's see what happens here. I mean, what am I actually getting back here from, um, let's see, the max function here? Okay, I think that's one more important thing to see, and then we'll have sort of complete coverage. Because if we look at the signature, it's returning us, you know, reference to that object here, okay? Um, so it's important to see, is this a... Well, it's, it's not a copy, right? So uh, if I say monster uh, ref here, okay, uh, let's go ahead and let's see. This was the melee battle. So I just want to say uh, just really quick here, address of crusher, okay? Uh, and I'll take the address of crusher. And I want to take the address of uh, the ref here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see uh, what happens here. Oops. Uh, let's see, what error did I get here? Uh, binding reference of type to const. Okay, okay, let's see here. I think it's got to be a const. Did that work? Okay, so that's happy here. Um, and anyways, the point of this is I have the address of my crusher, and then I've got, well, the thing that's returned from the max here. It is a reference to this actual crusher object here we're not creating new things when we take a max here again so maybe that's something that maybe folks would uh get confused or mess up with a max function um so again nice to have that with the uh stl um and again we could see that this address is exactly the same here okay uh you know we are returning a reference a const reference to this uh object here it's not being modified or anything uh, and in the case here where we're you know, returning an object, we, we know how to print out the object. Okay, so that was the whole point of writing this little O stream function there. Alrighty, folks. So with that said, hope you enjoyed this lesson. You can track all the other C++ lessons. Keep track of your progress on my website, courses.mshot.io, and check out some of the other courses. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying our journey into the uh, C++ standard template library there. Hopefully you learned a few new things from this video. We actually got to dive into a few other new things that uh, weren't necessarily in min and max. I'm happy to uh, have shown that. Hopefully you learned something. And if you have questions, feel free to engage in the discussion below. So with that said, folks, thanks as always for your time and attention. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.